It's been more than 75 years since the beginning of World War II, almost 70 since the United States was drawn into the Korean War, and over 50 since the first troops landed on China Beach in Vietnam. When our country's involvement in these wars drew to an end, these same men and women who fought valiantly and courageously for our freedoms and rights returned home to continue living ordinary lives, hoping to put the past behind them. But for many of the men and women who served in the armed services during those tumultuous times, the memories of those days are often still strong. Minute details that exist on the fringes of their minds make their way into their everyday lives, shaping the people they become after returning home. While we are privileged to enjoy the rights and freedoms their courageous service provided for our nation, there are some humble heroes who were never properly recognized or honored for the sacrifices they made. Today, one way that veterans can be appreciated and honored is through a national organization called Honor Flight. The honor flight, it's just a phenomenal thing. Whoever thought this up uh, was uh, just had a, a lot of insight on uh, what these gentlemen had missed. For them not to get a homecoming um, from the American people, uh, it, it's just unbelievable to even think about uh, um, when these guys uh, uh, left their families and their homes to uh, go into these uh, uh, faraway lands and, and fight for our freedom. Um, so uh, they just came home and uh, they went back to their regular jobs and uh, away they went the rest of their lives. There are sometimes people who want to go who don't have a, a son or, or someone that they want to uh, be a guardian and they take volunteers. We had at least two guys uh, on our trip that uh, that were guardians that had done it before, and had no connection to their to their uh, their veteran. Part of the role of the guardians on the trip is to stay with your veteran at all times, and they advise you not to leave your veteran. If you do, make sure someone else on the trip, another guardian, knows that you stepped away from your veteran, um, not to let your veteran carry anything. That's the professionalism of the organization. They've got it all um, dialed in really well. The veterans' safety and needs are of the utmost importance at all times with Honor Flight. Once the veterans and their guardians have been selected for an Honor Flight, organizers make preparations to create an experience that's memorable from beginning to end. The send-off from Penyan was early in the morning. It was like we left around 2 o'clock in the morning from the American Legion in Penyan. We were given a packet when we left uh, on the plane and included in the packet were letters from uh, school kids, I think as young as second grade and maybe up till eighth grade. A bunch of schools up in Rochester uh, wrote them all letters, had their names, had their ranks. It was very touching. When our plane landed in Baltimore, Washington, they had the the fire trucks out and doing the ceremonial spray that uh, they usually do in New York Harbor with the uh, with the harbor fire boats. We started out at the World War II Memorial, which, as I said before, I hadn't seen. Uh, we also went to the Korean and Vietnam memorials, the Marine Memorial, Air Force, and the Women's Memorial. They were all. They were all uh, impressive. The Korean monument is uh, probably the most outstanding. These guys are lifelike, all their equipment on, going through these um, fields, um, these jungles, uh, and, and the expressions on their faces, like they're really yelling to the guy that's next to them or the guy that's in front of them, and it, it is so lifelike. The most impressive thing that I saw down there was the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. I think that was 21 steps up and 21 steps back. Their, their pants, you could see their pants, had a knife press on them. Yeah, and they do it 365 days a year. Rain, snow, anything. 
to see this wall, and it goes on and on and on. I don't know how long it is, whether, is it 100 yards long? I don't know, but it, it does go on and on and on. And all these names that are in there. And, and to see the people um, that are taking their pencil and, and, and getting their loved one's uh, name or somebody they knew or something of that nature, it, it, it's very touching. And it's nice that they're able to do that, too, um, because that may be the only thing that they have um, to remember that individual by. Visiting the different war memorials in D.C. isn't the culminating event of the weekend. The veterans' return home is just as carefully planned and orchestrated. We are here today to honor the veterans coming back from the honor flight and uh, show our support and our respect. We've got some American flags uh, that we're going to post and we're going to applaud and we've got some signs that we're going to hold up to make sure that they hear that we're loud and proud. Both my daughter and I made sure the grandchildren were there because we both feel that it's very important that the patriotism is instilled in, in the kids from the youngest age. In coming through the airport, gates, the amount of the reception on the other side is really overwhelming. Everyone's very excited to be there and supportive. I saw several people from the surrounding area that just go up when Honor Flight comes back just to take part in the festivities. Uh, kids with signs, a, a lot of other veterans, a lot of flags. It's just a, a great event overall. The most profound impact was the return. Not because I was anxious to get home, but just the, uh, the wel welcoming was uh, amazing. It's the coming home ceremony in Rochester. That would be the, the greatest thing. I tried to watch for them. I knew they'd be there, but uh, they had a sign up. My favorite memory on the trip was really seeing uh, my father's reaction at, at the coming home. Uh, obviously, when you're dealing with with someone who's a Vietnam War veteran, there's there's a lot of um, a lot of emotion around. They're coming home, and and a lot of really bad stories. And um, to see him come through and and get that type of response and his reaction to it certainly was um, really what what I felt going on the trip was all about for my father was the the coming home. I thought it was very important to go one because I'd heard about it. And two, um, just to thank, to be part of something that um, thanked these guys for uh, what they did. Well, I got kissed a lot. <laughs> yeah, some gals came up, gave me a great big hug and a kiss. Finding ways to show our gratitude to these veterans isn't always easy. While hugs and kisses may make the moment, this group trip to Washington, D.C., is a heartwarming memory that will be with these men and women for the rest of their lives. In this day and age, we hear about people who think that they're heroes, like people who play sports and people who are in the show in show business and people we see on TV. They are not heroes. Each and every one of you, the men and women who have given so much for our country, the men and women who didn't ask anything in return, the men and women who said, I'm there, I'm going to stand and defend this country, you are the real deals. You are the true American hero. Well, I felt that they hadn't forgotten me because I was in the service, and I thought it was real nice of them to do it.